Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going over uh, some of the states in the electoral map. I'm kind of going what the polls are saying right now for how the electoral map's looking. And I'm using the information we already know and kind of breaking down scenarios for how Joe Biden and President Trump can both uh, reach 270 electoral votes and win the presidency of the United States. So with that, with getting into that, I'm going to go east to west. And I'll start in the state of Maine. So Joe Biden is favored in the state of Maine. I'd put that in the uh, lean, probably lean to save. Probably I'll go likely save calm right now. Uh, Maine's first district I'd also put in the save calm. I think President Trump is ahead in Maine's second district though. I'd put that in the lean calm. I think Trump is ahead in uh, Maine's uh, second district. New Hampshire I'm going to put as a toss up for now. Because I think New Hampshire is getting close. It is closer than the polls suggest. Plus, I do want to talk about New Hampshire and the importance it could play uh, coming up in a few minutes. Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and D.C. are all going to be voting for Joe Biden, all in the safe margin for every single one of them. Uh, there's not much surprise there. New York will go safe blue. Illinois will also go safe blue. Virginia, just for the sake of just wanting to extend the video, I'll put Virginia in the toss-up column for now, but I do I just want to talk about it a little more, but it's going to be pretty much safe for Joe Biden. Pennsylvania, I'll put in the toss-up column. Uh, Trump will win safe in Kentucky, er, er, West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Missouri, pretty much the states we call the Red Wall. Trump's going to win safe, except for Nebraska's second district. That'll put as a toss-up. I do want to come back to that. Texas, for now, I'll put in the toss-up column as well, just to talk about it a little more. Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Alaska, uh, Hawaii, I'd put in the safe for Democrats, California, Oregon, and Washington as well. The rest of these states, I'm going to just put in toss-up for now, just so I can talk about scenarios. Because you see all these toss-up states, they're not really all toss-ups. We know how a lot of them are already going to go. But I just want to, for the sake of the video, show you what like the bare minimum is for both for both sides. Uh, so we have Biden at 185, Trump at 126. Now, I feel like we know Biden is probably going to win New Mexico. We also know at this point Biden is probably going to win Virginia. Biden's probably going to do relatively well in Colorado as well. And then we also know, actually, but then say we know Nevada at this point will probably go for Biden as well. Trump hasn't really been spending too much time or focusing on there. That's kind of an indicator that Trump knows he's probably not going to win in Nevada. Now, Texas, I think we know that Trump's probably going to win Texas. Georgia, right now, it's looking like Trump's going to win there. Democrats aren't putting as much emphasis on the state of Georgia as compared to, let's say, Arizona, or North Carolina, or something like that. Ohio and Iowa, I still feel confident giving it to Trump at this time. That gets Trump to 204, Biden to 218. Now, how many states we have? We have all these states left. Minnesota right now. Minnesota is borderline toss-up for me. I'm hesitant. I want to put it in the lean Democratic column for now because I feel like I've seen a few polls that show Biden is up bigger in Minnesota. But as we learned from 2016, the polls can be wrong. But I think at this part of the election, Minnesota is probably in a lean column for Joe Biden right now. But look for Minnesota to be close come election day. So right now we have about seven toss-up states left. I think these are the seven seats or seven states that will really decide how the election goes. And they're important for both Trump and Biden. But I'll start with Biden first. The Biden scenario, I feel like it's a little bit easier. If Biden can win Florida, this election is pretty much over for President Trump. Because this is why. Florida is pretty much essential for President Trump to win. If Biden wins Florida, which is technically President Trump's home home state now, Biden is already favored to win one of Michigan or Pennsylvania based off what the polls are saying right now. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that it's Biden's former home state of Pennsylvania. That gets Biden to 277, right? Let's say Trump somehow wins or it's still a toss on Pennsylvania. Let's say Biden wins Michigan. That gets Biden to 273. So that's why it's essential for Trump. If Trump wants to win, he has to win Florida. Otherwise, it's really, really hard. Let's say Trump does manage to win Florida. Let's say Trump wins Florida, and he, that gets him to 233. Can Biden still win? Yes. Biden wins Michigan. Biden wins Pennsylvania. That gets him to 264. 
Now, there's a few more ways Biden could win. He could win New Hampshire again. That'll get him to 268, but we already... That doesn't really get him over the top. Arizona, however, is not looking as good for Republicans as it has in past presidential elections. If that flips to Biden, that's how Biden can win. So I think President Trump does not have as many pickup opportunities as Biden. That could be both good and bad because President Trump knows where he has to focus his time. But that also gives Biden more scenarios for winning. So Biden could win by winning Arizona and Michigan and Pennsylvania. And he doesn't have to worry about Florida, which is why Biden can win without Florida. Trump cannot win without Florida. That's what I'm trying to get at from Biden's side. President Trump, on the other hand, President Trump, for me, it, as I mentioned, it all starts with Florida. President Trump's going to win. He needs to win Florida. That gets Trump to 233. That gets him within striking distance. Next, he needs to win North Carolina. North Carolina's 15 electoral votes. 2008 showed it is capable with the right candidate of voting to the Democrats. President Trump needs to win North Carolina. That gets him to 248. That gets him within striking distance. Now, President Trump's easiest way of winning would probably be, in my opinion, holding on to Arizona. Because Arizona, President Trump can win without Arizona, but it gets a lot harder if he doesn't have it. President Trump needs to hold Arizona because it provides him more opportunities to win and it gives him like more of a safety net. Also, this is really important. Maine's second district and Nebraska's second. President Trump needs to win there because I'll show you why. Trump goes from needing to get elector 11 electoral votes to 10. Trump only needs 10 more now, so Trump can win with just Wisconsin. Trump doesn't need Michigan or Pennsylvania or New Hampshire if he carries Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, and Nebraska and Maine's second districts. That is huge for President Trump. If President Trump does not win Nebraska's 2nd District, which I think of the two is more likely to flip than Maine 2nd, President Trump then needs to go out and win either Michigan, Pennsylvania, or New Hampshire. Now, President Trump did win two out of the three, and he came very close to winning New Hampshire in 2016, which is good news for him. However, President Trump makes it harder for him because he has to win another state, where if he just wins one district in a Republican state like Nebraska... Well, then he gets reelected for four more years if he just wins this one district. So that gets Trump to 270. Now, what if the Democrats win Arizona? Well, that gets Trump to 259. Biden's at 239. Trump would need to come in and win Michigan, Pennsylvania, or New Hampshire. Any one of Michigan or Pennsylvania would get it done. The only issue is it's close, but right now Pennsylvania, Biden in the polling uh, data does have a lead. And at Michigan right now, it looks like Joe Biden does have a lead. Now, again, come Election Day in 2016, Hillary Clinton was beating Trump in Michigan and in Pennsylvania and in Wisconsin. So anything is possible. President Trump could pull an upset there and win again. However, that's a lot to bank on. I mean, we're surprised it happened once. Will it happen twice? We don't know. Which is why it's better to have a concrete plan of how to win going into it. So if President Trump feels confident in winning Pennsylvania, for instance, despite what polling data says, well, that's great. He doesn't need Arizona. He'll win again. If President Trump feels confident in winning Michigan, that's great. He'll win again. And he actually can get the numbers to win big. But say that Michigan and Pennsylvania both agree with the polls and go blue. Well, Trump needs to win Arizona then. Trump needs to win Arizona because if he wins Arizona, that could be huge for him to hold on to Arizona, and he can win with just Wisconsin, and he doesn't even have to worry about Michigan or Pennsylvania. Now, this is what I call the nightmare for na scenario for Trump. If, if the Rust Belt totally flips back to Joe Biden, Biden wins in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Biden wins across the Rust Belt, across the board. Can Trump get to 270? Yes, but it's pretty damn unlikely. It starts, number one, it starts in here with New Hampshire. President Trump's first primary state where he won was the state of New Hampshire. President Trump seems to keep coming back to New Hampshire. He has something he really likes about the state. If President Trump can win in New Hampshire, that will get him to 264. Biden's at 274. Biden needs to lose a state that has six electoral votes, and Trump needs to gain one that has six. And I think you know what I'm talking about. It's right here, the state of Nevada. Uh, I hit California, my bad. It's right here in the state of Nevada. Now, Nevada has not voted for a Republican in the presidential election since George W. Bush. I believe it was back in 2004. And it has gotten closer. It was closer for Trump than it was for both Romney and McCain. But 
President Trump is not likely to win Nevada. He's not favored to win Nevada at this time. So can President Trump lose the Rust Belt and do the unthinkable and win in Nevada? This is also contingent on him winning Arizona and New Hampshire and both congressional districts as well. So can President Trump win without the Rust Belt? Based off the map, yes. Would I bet a lot of money saying this is likely? No. So President Trump's simplest way to win is I think he needs to win Wisconsin. It all starts with Wisconsin. And then if he can, if he knows he's not going to win Pennsylvania or Michigan, which I don't think he does. I'm just saying for hypothetical. If Trump thinks he's losing in Michigan or Pennsylvania, he should focus more time on New Hampshire, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. Focus in on the states that are close right now that you think you could actually win because Trump can win without Michigan and Pennsylvania and Minnesota but he needs to make sure he's got these states on lock to make sure that he can win. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.